All right, here we go, the MPEP 1800 PCT. And so PCT stands for Patent Cooperation Treaty. And this is a hugely important chapter, very, um, very often tested. And so let's get into it. So there's a couple steps that go into a PCT. So starting out, there's filing the international application, establishing the international search report. And so that is done by the International Search Authority. That's what ISA stands for. Um, at that point, a non-binding written opinion is sent by the International Search Authority to the applicant concerning the novelty, inventive step, and and that should say and industrial applicability. It, the written opinion will cover all of those aspects. Um, and so that occurs 16 months from the filing date. That's when it's sent to the applicant. So then from there, um, there's a publication of the international application with the international search report. That happens at 18 months from the filing date. And then um, the next step can be optional. So um, at this point, we're about 18 months from the filing date. Um, and the applicant can take the optional step to establish an international preliminary examination, which would re result in a second written report. And so this is called a demand for examination. So when you see questions that are talking about how an applicant submits a demand, this is kind of what it's talking about here. And this would need to be done by the later of three months from the international search report publication or 22 months from the priority date. So three months from um, that time that the ISR was published, that would put it at 21 months or 22 months from the priority date. So whichever one is later between those. So then the entry into the national stage. Um, for the United States, it's 30 months. For some other countries, it's 20 months. So you kind of want to know which stage is which because a lot of them won't accept the items late. So for that entry, you have to have a fee and a copy of the application. You do not, it does not count as an entry into the national stage until you have both of those there. As far as the translation and the author declaration, that can be filed up to one month later, but no later than that. And they are very strict about that. So now for the international application components, right? So that's our first step of how to submit a PCT application. So you have to have a request for international application. So something somewhere has to say, we want this to be an international application. There has to be a designation of at least one state. And I, um, so formally, and you might see this if you look at any old exams that are out there, um, formally, you would have to manually designate these states, but now it is automatically designating all states. So, but you have to have it designated at least one state in order for it to be an international application. You have to include the name of the applicant. So there might be a question that talks about what is or isn't required for a PCT application, and it might say the name of an inventor. Now, the name of an inventor, that doesn't necessarily need to be on there. You just have to have the name of an applicant. Then the specs claim and then drawing is necessary. And so um, the way that it's worded specifically in the PCT is it's something that on the face of it appears to be a claim. So really, if it just, if they can somehow fit claim in there, then it works. And then an abstract and a fee. And I believe um, between those two, I know the fee can be submitted late and I know the abstract can be submitted late. It actually might, I think it's just the abstract that can be submitted late. Um, so now as far as the request, so it has to be on a separate document. Um, you wanna write it as a petition for international application and includes a title and identifying the application and any agent involved. Now, upon filing, just like we talked about before, all country designations are covered, but at least one country should be designated formally. So it is automatically designating all of them, but you should say just for the purposes of the application, this country is designated. Now, it can only be filed in the receiving office of the country where at least one inventor is a citizen. So if um, as long as just one of the inventors is a U.S. resident or national, they can file it within a U.S. PTO. So now coming to priority as far as how that works with PCT. The first off, priority must be established no later than 16.4. So if you remember 16.4, that's the rule that we talked about in MPEP 200 and a couple other areas. That is where um, it's either 16 months from the priority date of the, or um, from the date of that document or four months from the filing date of your current document. So you have to establish it no later than 16 four. 
and you have to have the certified copy and the claim. That's when it must be established. So the certified copy, um, it comes under those same designations. And now the claim or the change in claim, they should be submitted within four months of the international filing date. So that just comes back to the 16-4, right? Because you a lot of times are wanting to claim priority within 12 months of whatever the document's filing date is. And so then plus four for an international filing would make it 16-4. So nice and easy. Um, and a PCT application should be filed within 12 months of an earlier application. And a fee and request can extend up to two months under PLTIA. So if you remember what the PLTIA that was enacted, I think that that went into effect September 16, 2020, um, 2012. And so under those rules, uh, provisional, domestic, foreign, and then also PCT, you can file it up to 14 months outside of the filing date of the earlier application. But there's a lot of danger with that because first off, it's a very, very high fee. Um, and so not really worth it. And so if you can, you definitely want to make sure that you can submit it within those 12 months. So now unity of invention. This is the PCT version of restriction. So you remember restriction is um, the restricting of either in, um, inventions within an application or species within an application. So uni unity of invention works similar, but it is different process. So first off, you can um, request for reconsideration. You can do that with a fee. Um, there has to be two distinct inventions. So remember the rule for that with restriction was when the inventions are patentable over each other. So if one of them could not be used as a reference for the other. Um, and two parties, they can identify lack of unity if, um, or the two parties that can identify the lack of unity would be the international search authority. So the ones who are writing the non-binding written opinion, they can do, um, they can identify lack of unity. Um, and the International Preliminary Examination Authority. So you remember them, they're the, if a demand for chapter two is made. So those are the only two authorities that are going to be writing opinions. So it makes sense that they're the only ones who can identify the lack of unity. So now a protest is possible with an additional search fee. Um, so then there's a potential though for the search fee to be partially refunded if that protest is persuasive. So that's kind of an interesting one, um, I think, because what happens if you ha is you have to elect and you have to elect with a fee similar to the restriction. But if you um, are electing with traverse, then in that case, you can potentially get that fee back because you already paid the search fee. So in some cases, that can be that can be successful. So now for amendment opportunities. Um, so there's one option to amend before publication. So before the International Search Authority publishes that application in, this, in the written opinion, there's Article 19 amendments. So in the Article 19 amendments, only the claims can be amended. And this is after the International Search um, Report is received by the applicant. So usually there's about two months between when the International Search Report is received by the applicant and when um, the publication of it is. And so that is when the claims can be amended. So the way that I remember this one is that um, if you are only 19, then you don't have a claim for anything, right? You have your independence, but you don't really have a claim to anything. And so that's how I remember that only claims can be amended. <laughs> so might be a little bit of a counterintuitive um, way to remember it, but whatever works for you. But if you can just remember that Article 19, only claims can be amended. And it's after the international search report is received by the applicant. So now the other option is Article 34. And this one can only be done if and only if Chapter 2 is filed. So Chapter 2 is that demand for um, preliminary examination. And so with this one, much, much more um, is allowed. So you can do, you can amend your claims, your specifications, or your drawings. So you really have a lot of options um, after filing chapter two, but you usually want to file it with chapter two. So remember chapter two, it you file it the later of three months um, after international search report is published or 22 months from the priority date. So you have either that gap or when you file chapter two. So prior to the later of three months from mailing date, ISR or 22 months from the priority date. Um, I just wanted to make a note on the written opinion. So prior to 2014, it was not 
published. Um, so prior to 2014, the written opinion was not publicly available at the publication of the International Search Report. It did not become publicly available until 30 months, um, but they changed that. And so now it is publicly available at um, 18 months with the International Search Report, which is pretty cool. Um, so it's submitted with the Chapter 2 demand. So now amendments, they can um, just be done normally after national stage entry. So once you um, get into the U.S., you filed your certified copy, your oath and translation, your fee. Um, at that point, you can make amendments just like you normally would in an application. So now national phase entry. So now it must be entered by the expiration of 30 months from the priority date. Um, and you have to include the copy of the application and the national filing fee. Now, those which can be entered one month late with a surcharge um, would be the oath or declaration and the translation of whatever that application, if it's not published in English. Um, now, as far as who files the international application, so if they're not designated in the U.S., the PCT can be filed by the assignee. Um, and then the national stage applications for the U.S. can be filed by the assignee as an applicant under 136. Um, it can be signed by the agent or attorney. And then as far as just miscellaneous rules here, um, the term of the PCT patent is 20 years from the filing date of the international application. So kind of an important distinction, and it's not the date it enters the national phase. Um, so now summary of the minimum parts of the international application. You want to have at least one applicant who is U.S. national, uh, English description, a request for treatment of um, international application, designation of at least one country, and a priority claim. The abstract, like we said, that can be late. So now filing confusion. So now the fee and abstract can be submitted late. Um, the inventor or the owner can be the applicant. Um, the priority claim cannot be really added late. I mean, 16.4 is kind of on the later side, but it's not actually late. These are just like rules that you want to kind of remember. All the designations are automatic. Okay, so um, looks like I didn't quite finish writing that out, but pre-AIA 102E rules, um, when it comes to the MPEP 1800, there, um, you have to remember that foreign filing dates do not count. So for pre-AIA, um, when you're trying to figure out what 102E um, is applied for prior art, international filing dates can come into effect if, and these are all these conditions have to be met, it's after it was filed after 11 29 2000 it was published in english and it designated the us um, now in this case the 102 e date which is used as prior art would be the date the international filing date is accorded so once every all the conditions are met so that's an important distinction as well because if you remember everything that has to be included if the abstract is submitted later that's okay because you'd still get a filing date now, if the international application is filed after 11-29-2000 and it does not publish in English or designate the U.S., then no 102E date is accorded to the patent, even if it's later published in the U.S. Um, so here's some examples from 2136. These, I think, are very, very helpful. So um, we have an IA that's filed in Swedish. Um, the U.S. is designated then it is later published in English. And so in that way, because it's after the 10 or the 11, 29, 2000, the 102E2 date is the 1st of January, 2001. And there's more examples in this, but these are just the ones I felt like were helpful here. So in this one, the IA is once again filed after um, that priority date, but then it's published not in English. So if it's not published in English, then there is no 102E2 date. <laughs> So now with this one, I filed in Canada, designated the U.S., it published in any language. And so now, even though it published in any language, because it was filed before that critical date of 11-29-2000, the national stage would be the date of the 102E um, priority date. So now for post-AIA, much, much easier. Um, the language and designation doesn't matter. Um, it's all based off of 102A1 and 102A2 priority dates. And so now for the general PCT timeline. This is located in the MPEP 1842. And so this one is, um, again, another really helpful timeline to see or to make yourself. So at zero months, you have their filing of the priority document. Now, this is not necessarily... Um, 
a requirement, right? You can just start with the international application. It doesn't have to be claiming priority to some other document. But then at 12 months, let's say you have the international application filed claiming priority. Um, so now you would include the request, the priority claim, specs claims, um, the abstract, the fee, which can be submitted late. Um, applicant U.S. must be a U.S. citizen in, in the case of um, filing at the USPTO. So now at 16 months, the international search report and written opinion are sent to the applicant. Um, yeah, kind of what we had talked about before, how um, filed prior to 2014 don't have the work, um, the written opinion public until 30 months. Now it's upon the publication at 18 months. So now the applicant, two months from this date or um, 16 months from the priority date, uh, can file the Article 19 amendments amending the claims. And, and I apologize, that should be two months or 18 months from priority date would be the time, or uh, up to 18 months, because remember, that's when 18 months when it gets published. So now, 18 months, international publication, and international search for are published. Um, so now at this point, Article 34, amending the claims, the specs, and the drawings, um, these amendments can be filed three months after the mailing of ISR or 22 months later. So when it's saying mailing though, that is um, three months after the publication, I believe that should be um, three months after the publication. And then it's within um, three, actually, no, maybe I did have that right. Yeah, okay, so it is three months after the mailing of the ISR or 22 months later is when you can file the demand. Um, and then within three months of the ISR mailed or 22 months, chapter two demand for international preliminary authority examination. Um, that's when that takes place. And then remember, um, entry for certain stages are at um, are at 20 months. And so you have to be paying attention to that timeline. Yeah, so between 16 and 18 months, that's when you can do Article 19 amendments. And then um, between 18 to 22, that's when you can do the 34 amendments. Yeah, it, I mean, it is mailing report. Yeah, so it is mailing of the report of the written opinion. So, so later, 22 months. So most likely, though, the 22 months is going to be the later. So that's more of the time that you would want to be, you'd be bound by. So now chapter two demand, just real briefly, uh, it's made three months after the ISR is mailed or 22 months from priority date. So it's either 19 months from the priority date or 22 months from the priority date, basically. Uh, the international preliminary examination authority will carry out the international preliminary examination. So when making that request or demand, you're working with the IPEA. And then it takes into consideration the references that were used in the ISR. So whatever references were used in that written opinion, they can be used in the demand as well. Now, the IPEA begins the examination when after receiving the demand, the fee, translation, the international search report, and the written opinion. And now the report presents the final position of the examiner by 28 months from the priority date. So now the advantages of PCT applications, right? Why would you do this rather than just doing national stage and then publishing foreign? Um, first off, the big one of the two big ones is benefit of timing. So you'd have more time between the initial filing and the entry into the national stage, and that would allow for the applicants to prepare the documents while the priority date is maintained. So then for your international search, um, you can kind of find out the state of international art and know that before entering the national stage. So that when you are dealing with U.S. examiners, you're in a much better position for making arguments because you really do know what's out there. Um, there can be delay in the payment of fees, more research time, additional time to establish marketability, which is all huge advantages. Um, additional time for research, of course, always helpful. Um, and then you ha have the option for the international preliminary examination, which is also um, a big advantage, again, with finding out the state of the international art and that sort of thing. Um, I just want to check really quick and see. Okay, so yes, so as far as um, the elements of the application, which must be submitted at the time of filing, um, would be the 
uh, would be the request, the designation of at least one country, applicant specification claims and drawings. So just to clarify, the abstract and the fee, they can both be submitted late, but they do have to be submitted within a prescribed time limit or the application can be considered withdrawn. So just wanted to add that real quick here at the end. And I think that that is it. All right. Well, sorry, I probably went through that a little bit too fast, but hopefully, hopefully that was helpful and hopefully um, makes sense. Thank you.